There was only one issue on which he would not compromise, conservation. Dear Kermit, he wrote his son, mother and I have just come home from a lovely trip to Pine Knot. It is really a perfectly delightful little place. In the morning, I fried bacon and eggs while mother boiled the kettle for tea and laid the table. It was lovely to sit and hear the birds by daytime and at night the whippoorwills and owls and little forest folk. In 1905, Edith Roosevelt paid $195 for a cabin deep in the woods east of the Blue Ridge Mountains of Virginia. She called it Pine Knot. It was very simple. It was bare bones. There was no running water, uh, no facilities of any kind, no electricity, and they went there to be away. It was, it was their retreat. As a boy, Roosevelt had dreamed of becoming a naturalist. And even as a very busy president, he never completely abandoned his first passion. He continued to study evolutionary theory and added to his already expert knowledge of large mammals and small birds. He takes great pride in identifying a large number of birds. And indeed, when uh, John Burroughs comes down, they have a race through the woods to see who can see and identify the most birds. It's probably not birding in the conventional system because he's just charging through the woods at full speed. He probably knew more about the natural world, had a greater interest in natural history than any president uh, since Jefferson. And no president had ever acted forcefully to confront the damage private interests had done to the nation's public lands. For more than a century, America's natural resources had been cheaply given away, then exploited and destroyed. Forests had been decimated. Grasslands ruined, buffalo slaughtered. By 1900, half of America's original stand of timber had been cut and billions of tons of precious topsoil washed away. To save America's natural resources and protect the wild areas that meant so much to him, Roosevelt would stretch the power of the presidency to the limit. We must handle the water, the wood, the grasses, he wrote, so that we will hand them on to our children and children's children in better and not worse shape than we got them. Conservation is the one real cause for Theodore Roosevelt when he first becomes president. It is the only thing in domestic affairs where he gets out in front, even of reformers. Public rights come first, Roosevelt said, and private interests second. Roosevelt would fight a running battle against the conservatives in Congress to preserve the nation's natural resources and some of its most famous landmarks. Congress was refusing to make the Grand Canyon into a national park. And the reason was because the developers were coming along and they were going to improve it. What T.R. did is he realized that he had the power to make national monuments and the power to make game reserves, and so he declared the sides of the canyon a national monument and the base of it a game reserve, and he said Congress will come to its senses eventually. Roosevelt again went into action when the birds of tiny Pelican Island, a four-acre speck of land off the east coast of Florida, were threatened by hunters collecting feathers to decorate women's hats. Is there any law, he asked, that will prevent me from declaring Pelican Island a federal bird reservation? Told that there was none, he said. Very well, I so declare it. Pelican Island became the first federal wildlife refuge, and Roosevelt would authorize 50 more simply by declaring them into existence. He pushed the limits of the presidency in terms of conservation, or really what he did was he, he pushed the limits of the... 
For him, it really is a moral issue. We need to preserve the wilderness. He believes when life begins to get too easy and the elements of danger and of risk and of hardship are removed, we have to expose ourselves to those again. And we need to preserve the places where we can do that. You need the challenge. And he's deeply worried that, the, that, that in a sense, we won't be good soldiers. We won't, men especially, won't have the opportunity to develop the physical and the moral qualities that will, will make them soldiers and citizens and, and do the things, in other words, to make them be like him. Before he was through, Roosevelt had created five new national parks, 18 national monuments, 150 national forests, in all, placing 230 million acres of United States land under public protection. These would be Theodore Roosevelt's most enduring legacy.